Now, the problem states as follows. A rectangular sheet of paper has corners labeled A, B, C, D, with corner A opposite corner C and corner B opposite corner G. The edge between corners A and B has length 98 centimeters, and the edge between corners A and D has length 42 centimeters. So we have the paper as follows. We can see that the length edge between corners A and B is indeed 98 centimeters, and the edge between corners A and D has length 42 centimeters, and we see that corner A is opposite corner C, and corner B is opposite corner D. Now, point X is chosen on the edge between corners A and B, so on this edge over here, and point Y is chosen on the edge between corners C and D, which is the bottom edge right here, so that when the paper is folded along segment XY, corner A perfectly coincides with corner C. So we want corners A and C to coincide with one another. So what we can do here is we want to try to fold the paper accordingly, like this, so we can see that A and C become one point. So let's do that. I'm going to fold the paper and then form the crease along this diagonal right here. I'm just rotating it so it's a little bit easier. And we can see that A and C are the same point now. So here is our point X, and here is Y down here. Let's take a moment to label that. So now we can see we have our points A, B, C, D. We have X in between A and B, and Y in between C and D. So after the paper is folded, as we can see here, points X, B, C, D, and Y form a pentagon. So there's X right here, B, C, D, and Y. And then so I was holding it from here so you can see more easily, this is our pentagon. To the nearest whole number, what is the area of this pentagon? All right, so here we can see a diagram of the pentagon that we constructed earlier on paper. So let's see what we can do to label this diagram with the information that we know. So we can recall that this diagram has a rectangle originally. So the right angles that were there beforehand are still going to be right angles. So we have a right angle at y, d, a slash c. And we have another one at angle b as well. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem perhaps when we see right triangles. However, we're going to need to know some lengths in order to do that. So recall that segment a, d, well, c is now the same point, had length 42 centimeters. So let's put that in. Similarly, we knew that segment BC had length 42 centimeters. So we can put that up here as well. Now, remember when this paper was originally unfolded, it looked something like this. And we had a point B was over here and C was over here. So when we fold the paper, this XB segment just moved from here to here. It did not affect the length of AB. So we can have, or we can draw in some AX right here. And we can say that, let's just say that like BX is going to be equal to some X that we don't know. So, and we remember that AB was 98, so our length AX is going to just be 98 minus X. And this is notable because now we have a right triangle here, triangle A, B, X. So let's see what we can do to solve for X. So we can recall the Pythagorean theorem, namely that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So our two legs are A, are A B, and B, X, and our hypotenuse is AX. So let's write this down. So we have that yeah, AB squared plus BX squared is equal to AX squared. Now let's substitute in the lengths that we already have. 
So our AB was 42, so that's going to be 42 squared plus BX squared, which we don't know, it's just X squared, is equal to AX squared, which is equal to 98 minus X squared. All right, so now let's see, what, we should expand this out and see if we can solve. So 42 squared plus X squared stays the same. And our 98 minus X squared is going to be equal to 98 squared minus 2 times 98 times X. plus x squared. Now you may notice that I decided not to go through and expand the numbers yet. And the reason for this is because we might be able to cancel some stuff out right away and not need to do as much arithmetic. So what we can see right away that we can cancel out is these two x squareds terms. And we want to be able to cancel these things out because linear equations are much easier to deal with than quadratics. So our x squareds now go bye-bye. Now let's move our x's all to one side and have the constants on the other. So we have that 2 times 98 times x is then equal to 98 squared minus 42 squared. Now let's see what factors we can cancel out. Now we can see that there we have a bunch of sevens in common from both sides as well as this two. So let's just go through and prime factorize everything. So we have two times two times seven squared, because that's two times seven squared, so 98 is, times x is equal to 98 squared. So that's going to be two squared times seven to the fourth, because two times seven squared quantity squared is equal to two squared times seven to the fourth. And then 42, which is equal to two times three times seven, we square that, and it's two squared, three squared, seven squared. All right, so we can see that there are some sevens that we can cancel out right away. So let's cancel out the seven squared here. The seven to the fourth, when we cancel it, it will become a seven squared. And the seven squared at the very end is just going to go away. Similarly, we have two twos on the left hand side, that's going to be two squared. And we see some two squareds over here as well. So goodbye, two squareds. Two squared goes away. And finally, the last two squared goes away. So what we're left here is just an x on the left-hand side. And x is then going to be equal to 7 squared minus 3 squared. And that's going to be 49 minus 9 equals 40. Now remember that we can't stop here because we have to remember what the question is asking for. And the question was asking for the area of the pentagon, A, the x, d, y, d. All right, so let's see how we can do that. So we've got multiple parts to this pentagon. This triangle up here, and then this part down here. All right, so how can we find the area? Now we can see that there's a sort of symmetry here between um, this side here over here and the side over here. In fact, when we did this fold, this left and this right hand side are going to have equal area. So this part on the bottom is basically just half the rectangle area. And we can find the area of the right triangle pretty easily. Since we have our two lengths is 42 and 40. And that's going to be one half base times height. So that's going to be just one half times 40 times 42. And that's just 40 times 21, which is equal to 840. And we want half of the rectangle next. So one half of the rectangle is then going to be equal to one half times 42 times 98. And that's just going to be equal to 42 times 49 which is going to be equal to 42 times 50, which is going to be 2100 minus the 42, because we only wanted 49 of them. And that's going to be equal to 2100 minus 42 is 2058. So then we just need to add these two things up, and our total is going to be 2898.
All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Hi everybody, this is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.